It's time to go back to Ixalan. Hello everyone, I'm Darcy Bits. Today we are going to be using Urza's AI and have it invent the founding of Ixalan's pirates. Yes, we're going to find out where these pirates of the Storm Rexy came from once and for all as determined by an AI. <laughs> but seriously, I was experimenting with some keywords, seeing if I could maybe make the AI make me an unset, something a little bit weirder. And you'd think that would be easy for an AI, but honestly, Urza's AI is really good. It is very consistent at making playable cards that don't feel like unsets. They're not weird. I'm still going to try and do that eventually in the future, but... During that time, I tried out some pirate as a keyword, and I just kept making good pirates. And I was like, maybe, maybe the AI makes really cool pirates. So today, we're going to put that to the test and see an entire set full of pirates. Once again, we are using the mana cost and the card types from a real set. Uh, in this case, it is Rivals of Ixalan, actually. It wasn't what I was planning on doing, but when I looked through the sets, I went, that one looks pretty good. And you might be thinking, Rivals of Ixalan has some weird flip cards, and it does. When I pulled the information from Scryfall, it said, hey, this card is a legendary artifact slash legendary land. And I thought, what if I made it a legendary artifact land? That could be interesting. So all of those weird flip cards have been modified in their type line to be both halves in one. Now... Worth pointing out, that does mean they have a mana cost, even though lands normally do not. So they're not going to fit the same place in the color distribution. So there's going to be like, you know, like a five drop missing from red or something. I don't know what they are. I didn't look that closely at it. But that's something to be keep in mind for this set. Maybe that's going to skew things a bit, but it's like a few cards. I don't think it should be a big deal. And of course, it means that these cards are going to be free to play. Um, previously when I've made lands with mana costs, I have ruled that this means that it is a land that has a mana value greater than zero, but it still is a land. You still get to play it for free. There is no official ruling on how that would work, but generally speaking, being a land overrides all the other limitations of a card. So it stands to reason that, well, you don't cast it. So even though it has a mana cost, you don't pay it. That's my ruling. Let's get to the cards. Gyrox, what the? Starting off strong. Gyrox Day's Retribution is a three mana blue instant. Gyrox Day's Retribution deals X damage to any target. If blue was spent to cast this spell, draw two cards, then discard a card. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. Recently, I've actually been looking at some real cards and realized that some cards do not define X anywhere technically so previously i thought that x cards if the x was in the mana cost then you define the x and then if it says where x is blank in the text box that defines the x and while those two things are true there are also cards that do not say where x is blank they simply say something like target creature with mana value x deal x damage or something right and they don't it's not that you're paying x and that defines what you're allowed to target it's just once you've targeted something x has been defined which means basically you get to always define x if you said oh x is 10 and it has an x in the cost well now you gotta pay 10 if you wanted to target a creature where x is 10 well you now you got to make sure there is a creature where x is 10 right so you just get to define it so if it's not defined like here i can just say deal a million damage to any target and that would be valid so we're not going to keep this card of course but it's something to keep in mind with x cards in the future i think i've been re-rolling x cards where they technically could work um like, as written, this card does function. It's just a one-shot kill, so you would never print it. The threat of reprisal has a swift, bloody end. Let's get another shot. Shame that's the first card. I like the first card to actually be decent. Maybe I should have looked at it before we started going. Preeminent 
Orator is a three mana blue instant counter target spell. Target player mills a card. I like that. I don't know how it, how much. I think a full counter spell is blue blue. Is that correct? So okay, cool. I don't know how much that's something that's still printed. I think that generally they want to put restrictions on counter spells, but I don't know at what mana value you can just get counter anything. Target player milling a single card feels like an upside. I like it. Seems cute. I don't really run counter spells, but I understand that they should exist in a set. The first few tellings had an edge of steel. Sudden Salvation is a 2 mana green instant. Untap target artifact or creature. It gains indestructible until end of turn, meaning damage and effects that say destroy, don't destroy it. If its mana value was 5 or more, it's a 5-5 five, five creature with trample instead. Okay, so... Let's talk about this for a second. Something I want to start trying to do moving forward is using reminder text even when it's wrong. Previously, I have made sets where I said if the reminder text is uh, incorrect to the keyword it's attached to, re-roll the card. You don't get to use that one. I've decided, you know what? Who cares? Let's have keywords. They have their official version if they're they are not defined. But in the context of an individual card, if the reminder text is defined, we are going to use what they say. So, while normally indestructible means that damage and effects that say destroy don't destroy it, on this card, indestructible means damage and effects that say destroy don't destroy it, but if its mana value was 5 or more, it's a 5-5 five, five creature with trample instead. Is that ridiculous? Yes. Am I okay with it? Yeah, I think so. So what does this mean? It means, yeah, untapped target artifact, it gains indestructible until your next turn. If it isn't mana value 5 or greater, it has normal indestructible. If it does have mana value 5 or greater, it becomes a 5-5 five, five creature with trample instead of being indestructible. It still has indestructible, the keyword, it's just that... It doesn't have the effect, damage, and effects that say destroy. Don't destroy it. This is going to be confusing, but I've decided that this is the rules and we're going with it today. Choo-choo. A broken god once returned, a wounded world seeks the strength in you. Jessica War Wage. No. Jessica's War Wage. Jessica War's Wage. There it is. Jessica War's Wage is a 5-mana black and red legendary planeswalker Alana War. Ooh. When Jessica War's Wage enters the battlefield, you gain 3 life. Tap, draw a card, then discard a card. No loyalty. We're going to re-roll this one. But I do want to point out that I'm kind of into planeswalkers that have a faction as their name. Uh, we've seen this previously in... One of the other sets that we've made on the show with a Sultai Planeswalker. That was their, their subtype was Sultai. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Her battlefield creations are limitless. She will create the plan she needs to end the fight. Well, not today. She will not. Moving on. Let's try again. And we are getting Planeswalkers. Oh, that is a... Okay. Ixalan's Reward is a 5-mana, black, and red, legendary planeswalker, Cons of Tarkir. I'm a little bit less interested in Cons of Tarkir as a planeswalker type, because uh, it has, a, those are separate words, and like according to magic, like each word is its own, like, in individual subtype, so that's a bit weird, but... Alright, we'll let it slide for now. It has three loyalty, and at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Generic and red. Sacrifice Ixalan's reward. Draw three cards. Huh, interesting. So, what is this? This is an enchantment that you can attack, and can't target with enchantment removal. I'm kind of okay with that. Sure, obviously we, we want to see a Planeswalker have loyalty abilities, but... Does it really matter that they don't have them? I think they're still perfectly reasonable cards. Hmm, do I want to keep rolling just because, hey, we deserve a Planeswalker with loyalty abilities, or do I want to let this hang? I kind of like it. 
everyone draws extra cards. You can sacrifice it to draw three immediately. Now I'm going to re-roll it. Yeah, no. We need loyalty abilities. We need loyalty. Those are the new rules. As long as our black market remains functional, the land of Tarkir will never starve. Kadam of the Fading Suns. So far, we're not seeing any pirates. Come on. Nissa, voice of Zendikar. That's not... We're on Ixalan. Five mana, black and red. Five loyalty, legendary planeswalker, Dromoka. Wait, it changed. I Did I click it twice? We'll never know what happened with Nissa, although you can go back and pause the video if you want. Dromoka, the Anarch. Cool. Five mana, five loyalty, legendary planeswalker, Dromoka, plus two. Put two, plus one, plus one counters on target creature. Okay. Minus three, until end of turn, creatures you control gain double strike, vigilance, and lifelink. That is a lot. And minus six, creatures you control gain double strike, vigilance, and lifelink until end of turn. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, no, it, it does say until end of turn. The minus three ability says until end of turn creatures get these effects, whereas the minus six says creatures you control get these effects until end of turn. Totally different. Uh, yeah, never use the minus six, but otherwise, cool card. I like it. Five mana, five loyalty. It doesn't directly protect itself in that, like, it doesn't create a body to block, but it does make the blockers you have better, easier to block for her, for them, for it, whatever Dramoka is. And, um, the fact that it's getting two loyalty at a time, uh, we've seen previously, it's just, like, really hard to deal with. It, they just grow so fast. So they're able to stick around very easily. And additionally, I think it's worth noting that this is they put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. Not like up to one target creature or something. So if you want a plus two and you don't have any creatures, you gotta buff your opponents. Or you gotta not buff this. I'm into that. Cool. Spell Bomb is a 4 mana blue enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets minus 3, minus 3. Eh. It's fine. I don't know if anyone would ever play this. It seems too expensive. The greatest detonation in a generation will not flatten the pirate guild's basis. Well, you did mention pirates, though. It's about time, so... I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to roll too much, but I also... Ah, we could do better. Let's do better. I'll give you another shot. You get one. Watcher's Predicament is a four mana blue enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets minus two minus O oh for three mana. Draw a card, then discard a card. Okay, interesting. So minus four, minus four. You can kill something your opponent has. That's pretty useful. Here, on the other hand, it doesn't do much. It gives minus 2, minus 0. Yeah, they have less attack. I guess that's something. If your opponent has, like, a defender that's, like, a 2-4, you could, like, maybe make it so it can't hurt you or something, and that could be kind of funny, and then you just leave it on the battlefield. You're not going to ever get, be able to block through, though. Yeah, you won't be able to get through blockers, I mean. So that's probably kind of annoying. No, I think it's a bad idea. Don't take my ideas. But the point is that then it has a three-man activated ability to draw a card and discard a card, which I think is probably pretty good. It's not drawing a card, but it's still cycling. It's still moving forward. I think it's probably decent. I just don't know if it's decent with that cost attached. But I said they get one, and this card functions, and I think that's good enough. At times, even the tiniest fingers are sentinels. Academy Ruins. Ooh, we have a land. Academy Ruins is a land. Academy Ruins enters the battlefield. Tap. Tap to add white or tap sacrifice Academy Ruins. Draw a card. This is just a better version of those, like, lands that were in... I guess they've done it a few times now, but specifically in All Will Be One, because that just came out at the time of recording this. Well, it's been out for a while now, but you know what I'm saying. It's the most recent set at the time of recording this. They're basically the same thing as this, except for they you have to invest some mana and sacrifice them to draw that card. So it's just better, but I don't think that's really that big a deal. I think it, 
I think those cards are kind of annoying. They, they should be this good. For Ixalan's birthday, Mardu gets some of the spoils. Hmm, we need some more pirates. Where are our pirates? I guess maybe they're all waiting for, like, blue cards to come out. Sorceress Threat is a 3-mana black sorcery. All creatures get minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. Cool. I like it. It's just... It's, it's a very low-level board wipe. My kind of thing. I would run this in my black decks. 100% definitely I would do so. No weapon so dull that it can't be used as a staff. No armor so light it can't be thrown like a boomerang. Okay, I was with you in the first half. And no weapon, armor, or shield that doesn't take your enemy by surprise. Abominable humbug. I do not know what any of that meant, but all the power to you. Naya Dendrobos. Den Dendrobos. Is a three mana green and white 2-2 two -two creature centaur warrior. It has first strike and creatures you control have first strike. Huh. Cool. That's really strong for only three mana. Um, I'm okay with this. This is good. I like it. Could this exist in real magic? I don't think so. I don't think so. This seems way too good. But uh, I like it. And it's not just a one card win the game. So exactly where I want it to be as far as AI power level goes. The one of Ixalan's worst stories is it's is of a lizard accidentally kicking its master's blockhouse into the harbor. The best tale is of the time an Undine trainer failed to instruct her charges on the importance of bolstering their defense with dragon armor. The worst story is when a lizard accidentally kicked a, their master's blockhouse into the harbor. That story sucks. No one can tell it in a way that makes sense or is entertaining. Yeah, okay, I buy it. <laughs> Marchesa del Grado is a four mana artifact creature chimera. They are colorless and they are a star four. Marchesa del Grado's power is equal to the number of lands you control. Oh, so probably a four four when you play it, but could get bigger. I'm into it. Whenever a land you control is tapped for mana, Marchesa del Grado deals one damage to each opponent. That is really good! Holy crap! What? Wow! So turn one, it's a 4-4. Four, four. Well, turn four. The turn when you play it. When you untap with it, you then can just ping for five plus whatever you wanted to do with that mana anyway, assuming you have a land drop of course. And it's a 5-5 five five now. Dang. Whew. All right. The chameleons in the jingles. What? No, in the jungles. The chameleons in the jungles of Nar are as ferocious as the scarab beetles that ride them. I want some pirates. Where are my pirates? Weak Spot of Farag is a 2-mana colorless legendary artifact land. This is our first of the flip lands. The, no, the, 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 like, the cards that turn into a legendary land. But we have combined them into a legendary artifact land. So, you can play this as a land, but it has a mana value of 2. Otherwise, it does not have a, you know, otherwise it's colorless and doesn't actually, you don't actually have to pay that mana though. Weak Spot of Farag enters the battlefield tapped. When we expect a frog enters the battlefield, target player loses two life. Tap, add white or black. I kind of like this. Uh, it's it's like those lands that enter the battlefield tapped and they heal you one. This is the same thing except for it hurts your opponent. Cool. Doing a little bit more damage than you would heal with the same sort of land structure. But I think it's okay. I think that's probably good for the game. Yeah, no, I like it. I think this card looks good. They only require a well-timed touch of luck. The only thing I worry about is that with these lands showing up, we might end up in a situation where different colors are going to get more or less support, which is kind of the whole point of us fixing the mana cost, is that so every color is getting a nice even distribution of cards if we ever play this in sealed. Or limited, I guess I should say, not specifically sealed. So it's a little bit, you know... 
why does white and black get support? I don't know. But, oh well, here we are. What you gonna do? Arkina, 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 Allure Tactician is a six mana, white and blue, two, three, legendary creature, spirit, pirate. We got ourselves a pirate. They have flying and for four mana, one of which is blue, one of which is white. Arkina, Allure Tactician, gets plus one plus one until end of turn. I have it only once each turn. Wow, this sucks. This is really bad. Is this so bad I'm going to re-roll it? You know what? I like this rule. Everyone, everyone gets one. If I say they need to get a re-roll, I can say it once. Uh, if a card is fundamentally broken and doesn't function, I can re-roll that as many times as I need. Uh, yeah, let's get out of this thing. This thing just, ugh. I sure hope we get another pirate. We have been conquered by the force of righteousness. Eladomri, Lord of Leaves. Oh, I can see Eladomri getting a card where their, like, title is Lord of Leaves. Marowak, the Pokemon? Marowak is a six mana, white and blue, four, five, legendary creature, bird warrior. Marowak can't block. Whenever Marowak attacks, exile all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments you control, then return them to the battlefield. Oh, interesting. So I used to run a deck which used Argosi, uh, the Golden Argosi, which when it attacks, it exiles everything that crewed it that turn. It's a vehicle, you crew it, and you can crew it with more creatures than it actually requires, which is the fun part. Which meant I effectively would exile my entire board and then bring them all back the same turn every single turn. And I didn't care about actually hitting my opponent in the face with the Argosi itself, which is worth pointing out because in this case, this card, even though it's a six mana four five, it's effectively a six mana zero five. It can't block, and if it attacks, it immediately exiles itself. But you get to exile your entire board and bring it back, which might be worth it, right? Six mana is a lot. Probably this is going to be a problem, and I, I don't think six mana is enough to actually make this card work. It's too much, but there's something interesting about that. If I want to blink my entire board every single turn, I can do it with this. This lets me. And if I want to not blink my board, I just don't attack with it. It's not like at the start of every combat, exile your entire board. I like it. I like it a lot. In this family tree, only the strongest will survive. Wait, is that about Cubone? Jaddy Sunseeker is a two-mana white enchantment. As long as Jaddy Sunseeker is in your opening hand, you may cast it as though it had flash. I don't know how you prove that it was in your opening hand. I don't know what counts as your opening hand. And it doesn't do anything even if you did. I'm going to reroll this one. I think I might count this as a fundamentally broken card. Not as my one free reroll. Ooh, I like this new rule. This is a good rule. A crewmate who goes by his golden aura. Okay, whatever. Spark of the Alderum is a two mana white enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, Spark of the Alderum deals two damage to any target. Nice! That's really good. I like that card. Probably. Yeah, strong card. For a thousand years, all Malira was safe. The Sylvant kept Malira for their own. They respected its peace, knowing they could reap the benefits of its wealth. Where is the history of pirates? I want the history of pirates. Merchant Alliance is a 4-mana, 3-3 three, three human pirate. Oh, that's cool. It's like, um... It's a, once again, this is a group, right? I, I really am interested interested in creature cards that are groups of creatures not like a creature and this is like the alliance of merchants who i guess have an alliance with pirates and are pirates or something hmm first strike in haste it's a three three i don't know if i said that or not if merchant alliance would deal combat damage to a player it deals double that damage instead oh cool oh that's really interesting 
I had a conversation about something similar to this the other day. Uh, I was talking about Infect and how Infect, since you need only 10 poison counters, not Infect, but like Toxic or whatever, whatever it happens to be, I guess Infect is the more accurate one, is that effectively it's dealing double damage if you kill your opponent by, you know, Infect damage. If all you do is poison counters to your opponent, then every Infect is double damage to face versus non-double to creatures and i think that's really cool and it is different than first than double strike right it is similar but different and i think that's very very cool yeah this card's great four mana three three first strike and haste is already probably really good and then it does double damage if it hits face mm, that should be a mechanic i wouldn't be surprised if there are cards that have that mechanic but i do really like like, that, that that could be keyworded. That's a really nice, like, clean effect. It's just a good rule with a cutlass as to rule with a... What? It's just as good to rule with a cutlass as to rule without one. Peg Leg Alley Mouse. Honored Merchant. <laughs> I like that there's little asterisks around Honored Merchant. It makes it seem like it's, like, Honored Merchant, which is funny. <laughs> Crown of Empires is a 1 mana white instant. Target creature gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. You gain 2 life. When Tajik heard of the Skulk Itch Mites, he understood the true power of the Eldrazi. Are there Eldrazi? Are there Eldrazi in Ixalan? Hmm. Whirlpool Snar- I didn't talk about that card at all, did I? It's fine. I've immediately forgotten what it did. Well, um, target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn, and you gain two life for one mana. Yeah, that's what you that, that that that's reasonable for one mana. That's great. Yeah, I'm keeping this in. Whirlpool Snarl is a three mana. <laughs> Red enchantment. For five mana, two of which is blue, draw two cards. Then, if you control a swamp, untap all islands you control. Wow! This card is wild. So this card is supporting three color. It's red. Like, this is a Grixis card. Right? This is a Maestro's card. Red, blue, and black. You need to control a swamp, you need to have blue sources, and you need to be able to cast it for red in the first place. And I think it's worth it. Like, that's a lot of hoops, but... Three mana to set up, then an additional five mana of a different color to draw two cards. Probably if that was it, I don't know if that would be good enough or not. Maybe it would, honestly. Drawing cards is... Repeatably drawing cards without spending a card in your hand to do so is very powerful and then if you control a swamp on temple islands you control so i guess the problem with this is that it does go infinite if you have five islands a swamp and i guess the thing is you would need five islands a swamp and a mountain which is seven lands in the first place I think I'm okay with this. Like, it's really powerful, but it's going to take a while to get... Like, it's a lot of hoops to jump through to get it online. I think it's actually in a pretty healthy spot. I don't know. Let me know what you think. The survivors never looked at each other without grins on their faces. Aw, that's nice. <laughs> I like that. Neonate is a... 3 mana, red instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. As long as you control a creature, Neonate has first strike and death touch. This does not count as my one free reroll. This is a broken card. That does not function. These ne'er-do-wells find no better place to unload their meager treasures than in my pirate-infested labyrinth. Tesserit Enchanter Inventor. Okay, sure. Wall of Tears is a 3 mana red instant. Wall of Tears deals 2 damage to any target. Cycling, 2. 2 mana, discard this card, draw a card. Um. 
I mean, three mana for two damage seems pretty bad. But it's got cycling. But it's kind of expensive cycling. I'm going to use this as my one free reroll. Next thing we get, if it's worse than this, but still functional, it's in. From Jaya Ballard to all adventurers, the cons and the royal taint are dead. Celebrate and beware the bounty. All right. What do you got for us? Troll War. Okay, that that wasn't my fault. It just loaded two cards for some reason. Bloodlust is a three mana red instant. Bloodlust deals three damage to any target. Madness, generic, and red. If you discard this card, discard it into exile. When you do, cast it for its madness cost or put it into your graveyard. Great! Um, three mana for three damage. Not amazing, right? We generally compare our stuff to Lightning Bolt, but as we've mentioned previously on the show, Lightning Bolt is considered very strong. So I don't think it's actually a super fair comparison. It's okay to be considering a bit more. But it also has the Madness Mode, where you're casting it for only two mana, which I think is sort of the going rate nowadays. Like, we realized that one was a little bit expensive, or a little bit cheap, so two mana is kind of, like, okay. But it's not just two mana if you discard it. You've also paid the discard for whatever effect was causing you to discard. So it's even better than it being only two mana. So, mm, I think it works. In fact, there might be a card that's literally exactly this. I wouldn't be surprised if this exact card exists in Magic. For those with blood on their hands, there is no better measure of their authority than the gut instinct to give in to their insanity. Yeah, that seems right. Cunning Crew is a 7 mana red sorcery. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. You create a treasure token. That's it. Um. Wow. I mean, it functions. I'm going to reroll it, though. We get one. The deadly waters of Ixalan feed all manner of monsters, but few feed on as much as these raiders. Like, the pirate crew is one of the... Oh. Yeah, it looks like it's going to function. Navigator's Ascendancy is a 7-mana red sorcery. Choose one or both. Creatures you control get plus 2, plus 0, oh, and gain haste until end of turn. Target creature gets plus 4, plus 4, and gains first strike until end of turn. For 7-mana, I don't know if this is quote-unquote, like, good enough, but... I mean, this could be your win con, right? Like, having a win con is important. And, yeah. Like, that's a lot. If you've got, what, three things on the battlefield, let's say. Let's say it's only three things on the battlefield, and you attack with them, and they're all unblocked. Wait, this is a sorcery. Oh, this is a sorcery. If this was an instant, probably would be worth the price tag. As a sorcery, I don't know. But, whatever. Your opponent doesn't have any blockers, and you've got three 1-1s one -ones on the field, and you cast this for seven mana. I don't know how this situation happened, but let's just imagine it did. You're getting plus ten damage, because it's getting plus two for each of the three creatures, and then an additional plus four for one of the creatures. Okay! I mean, you did ten damage with eight mana. Like, that's not bad. I feel like that's fine. Also, it's seven mana. I, I misread that. Seven mana spell. Yeah, I don't think it, it, you're not excited about it, but yeah, we stand with cons and wraths. Together, we can bring the cons back from the afterlife. Together, we can stand on. We can stand as one against the Eldrazi. The Eldrazi again. Luca Vec, Ixalan pilot. So something happened. The Eldrazi. I feel like it's telling me a story of, like, Eldrazi coming to Ixalan and pirates, like, forming to, like, fight them back. And then they're like, well, now that we've, like, assembled a crew of sailors and stuff, let's just be pirates, I guess. <laughs> that's what this is saying to me. I don't know if that's correct. Yours Markership is a 4-mana, 3-2 creature human pirate. It has Menace and Tap, Regenerate, Yours, Markership. Oh, that's cool. Tap itself just to regenerate is pretty powerful because you can just block and then tap before damage. 
right? Like, that's pretty good. And if you attack with it, sure. If this had Vigilant, or no, yeah, if this had Vigilance, this would be really cool because you could attack and then if somebody blocks you, you can tap in, to regenerate in response. But instead, yeah, Menace if you're attacking, tap regenerate if blocking. Cool card. I like it. The other is an unexplained concoction that resembles no ale known to Bant. 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 I don't know. Rally the Captains is a two-mana red instant. Creatures you control get plus one, plus zero oh, until end of turn. I do not know what the going rate for that effect is, or what the going, like, buff amount for the two cost is, but this seems perfectly reasonable, and I would play this card, so... To me, good enough. Foul Pirates! Good play for text, I like that. <laughs> I'm into it. Thoric is a 4-mana, 3-3, three, three, green, elemental warrior. When Thoric enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature tokens. Additionally, you can tap this to add green. I like this. For 4 mana, you're getting 5-5 five, five worth of stats across three bodies, which is sometimes an upside. Oftentimes, because it's not like they need to have trample or anything, so you know, even just in a blocking standpoint, but, you know whatever you understand there's there's upsides and downsides to being across three bodies and then you can tap this to add green which is cool because you're not tapping again if this was a five five that you tap to add green that would be pretty bad but it's a three three that taps to add green which is already still not great but you still have those other two bodies that can do other things they can block and they can attack or whatever so i think it's pretty cool those who fear change have nothing to fear Thorn, Utopian Seer. And that's just someone being like, yeah, just don't worry about it. Like, I get that you fear this. Just don't. Like, <laughs> all right, cool. Forlorn Swashbuckler is a five mana, three, two, pirate warrior. Wait a minute, what? Okay, so it's a black card. I don't know if I said that. Pirate warrior. That's so interesting. I like the idea of something being both a pirate and a warrior. That's fun. But the fact that it has no, like base right like it's not a human pirate warrior or an elf pirate warrior or anything it's just a pirate warrior this is like tokens do you know how like a lot of tokens make like one one soldiers and you're like wait but what is it is it a, like what is it and it's not that it isn't like a goblin or a human it just doesn't really count as it it's not its identity it doesn't matter that it is that right so yeah this is and it also the fact that it represents like, non-legendary creature spells represent any creature that falls within its dimensions, right? So, Forlorn Swashbuckler could be anything. It could be a Minotaur, or a Goblin, or a Troll. But the important thing is that it's a Pirate Warrior. Maybe one of your Forlorn Swashbucklers is a human and one of them is a Goblin. Now, of course, mechanically they're neither, but you get my point. Forlorn Swashbuckler gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control. Oh, and it already starts at 3-2. Ooh, that's pretty good. When Forlorn Swashbuckler dies, you may put it onto the battlefield as a copy of another target creature you control. Oh, cool! I wish the flavor was a bit stronger here. Like, this was like a like a shapeshifter pirate or something, or, you know, that kind of thing. But, like, the idea of this, like, pirate warrior who goes out in battle and then dies and then comes back as, like, a weird doppelganger of somebody else, like, that is cool. That is fun. So by default, this is a 5-mana 4-3, which isn't great, but it gets bigger if you have more creatures, and if it dies, as long as you have a creature on the, the battlefield, wow, I said that weirdly, when it dies, you may put it onto the battlefield as a copy of another target creature. If there is no creature, you have nothing to target, right? So you need to have at least one other thing. If, the, if there's a board wipe, you can't bring it back, I imagine, unless you can, like, this won't trigger before everything leaves the battlefield, right? That's how that works? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ava made her fortune raiding enemy shipping and stealing treasures from local temples. Oh. Who's Ava? <laughs> why Why are you telling me this? <laughs> I guess Ava would be a forlorn swashbuckler. You actually see that in, in Real Magic all the time, where it's like the flavor text is referring to a specific example of the creature card, but not, even though the creature card isn't legendary. Yeah. 
Hook Clasp is a 3 mana colorless artifact. For 3 mana and tap, untap target attacking creature, it gets plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn. Holy crap! Wow! So you attack, you spend 3 mana, give something 3-3, three, three, and vigilance effectively. That's cool. That's really cool. If you use this on that other one we saw, it could even then regenerate itself if it needed to for some reason. I like this card. It might be a little expensive, but I like it. A poor sea captain's secret is never his to reveal. Wait, what? Dive Bomber is a 5 mana black 4-3 Kraken. It has Swamp Walk, meaning this creature can't be blocked as long as defending player controls a swamp. Dive Bomber can't attack unless you control a swamp. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so I think about this a lot, especially because I've been generating a lot of like cards in my own time and seeing what the AI comes up with. And we see a mechanic from old magic every once in a while, which is like, this Kraken can't attack unless your opponent has an island, because how would that even work? It needs somewhere to swim, right? That was like the original rationale. A lot of these creatures just like, they could not attack if your opponent didn't have an island, which made it basically useless. It was just a terrible mechanic. But the idea of saying, well, this can't attack unless you control an island, that's actually kind of a cool idea. I'm kind of okay with that, right? It's not a restriction you mind building around because it's your deck. You get to put things into it. It's fine. Now, that said, this is a five mana four or three that can't attack unless you control a swamp. That's not great, but it does have swamp walk. It depends how valuable that is to you. You might care that it's a Kraken more than you care that it is that it has Swamp Walk. And if that is the case, then this card's probably really decent, and I say we keep it. But it is an interesting point of that Swamp Walk isn't always going to come up, right? It's just not always going to come up. I know that in Real Magic there are some cards that can like make every land a swamp and stuff, and so, hey, great, you got an unblockable. If this just said 5 mana 4 or 3 unblockable... That'd be good. I don't know if that'd be amazing, but it'd be fine. And the thing is that this is worse than that. It's only unblockable two black decks. So, eh, I don't know. It's not my favorite, but it's not something I feel like I need to reroll either. It takes a real live pilot to get up and fly into a nest of sea serpents. Fang wrong. Why troops? Oh, cool. Or maybe that's way. I'm not sure. Sorry. Shark Claw Raider, ooh, is a 5 mana, red, 3-3 three, three, creature beast. When Shark Claw Raider enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact. Okay. It also, you can cycle it for generic and red, so 2 mana total. Generic and red, discard this card, draw a card. Okay, yeah, so... Five mana for a three three that blows up an artifact on ECB doesn't seem great. Like, I probably wanted if I was spending three mana on a three three, I wouldn't be that impressed. And also, spending two mana to destroy an artifact is probably, I guess, going right. Probably, even though usually that's bundled with like another use case. So it's not amazing. But you got to remember that this is not just playing a three three mana three three and playing a two mana artifact removal spell because you're doing both of them in one card so it's kind of like those two effects and a drawing a card so it's a little bit better i think generally speaking although it's also worse because you can't do it till turn five so bundling is a really interesting thing to evaluate because it's both better like economically but also worse because you can't do it like you can't split that cost up over two different turns right either way the fact that it has cycling too i think really does help this card work this card's a little bit below average on a lot of remark. Like, it's not doing anything great, but it can do a lot of different things. And at very least, you can always cycle it if none of those things are relevant to you. I think it's good, actually. Only the rare few make it all the way back to Bant. Bant came up again. Oh, wow. Okay, interesting. Blue Centaur is a green 2-mana 1-2. All right. Uh, yeah, Blue Centaur is a 2-mana green 1-2 creature centaur. Well, at least it's a centaur. It has lifelink. 
Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, two mana, one, two with lifelink. This card is probably perfectly fine. But it's boring and has a weird name, and I get one free reroll, so I'm going to use it. The ancients regarded centaurs as half-gods, seeing their bodies as expressions of the divine spirit. That is very cool flavor text. I'll give you that. Cultivator Behemoth is a 2-mana, 1-1, one, one, green human druid. When Cultivator Behemoth dies, create two, 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 green plant creature tokens. That is so cool! Not only is that just really good and maybe too good, honestly, but, but it, like, it's a druid that cultivated some plants. I love it! A hydroponic utopia born from one disastrous storm. As much as I'm enjoying, like, most of the cards we've been seeing, I am still waiting for some real pirates to show up. Parcel of Entrapment is a 2-mana white sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Parcel of Entrapment deals 1 damage to any target. Wow, that's so bad. Look for the edges of the universe. Those are where I live. Krovax. Let's see if we can do, a be do better. Barrow Denials. Barrow? Ba barrow? Barrow. Ba barrow. Barrow. Barrow Denials is a two-mana white sorcery. Destroy target lands. You know what? We're not in the previous block anymore. It's time for land destruction to be back, baby! Yeah, two mana sorcery destroy target land. Fine. That's fine. The last four floors of Barrow Denials were guarded by an endless hive-like tide of new inverts. But there were also tunnels. Tunnels big enough to fit three Findhorn cavalry, each under the protection of the living fortress's might. That was a lot of details and i think maybe it confused itself part way through there but i do like the idea of borrow denials as like the name for a just like land destruction spell it just seems good it also feels very like wizard like at sometimes we kind of forget that like ostensibly in magic we are wizards casting spells right um yeah you didn't like direct a bunch of troops to like destroy a a a, a, a building or anything you just were like, I cast the spell that denies you that. It just does not exist anymore. Weird. I guess it destroys it. It doesn't like exile, but whatever. You get my point. Direhorn Prowler is a 6-mana 5-5 five, five green rhino beast. When Direhorn Prowler dies, create a 5-5 five, five green beast creature token. A lot of, like, just dying making another token. And honestly, I'm fine with it. I like that mechanic. I think it works well. As this, my penance. Is this my penance for betraying that Kaldheim Griff? No. This is where my legacy will live. Kervek. Kalmright Hero. Honestly, I want to build a deck that's based around these, like, death triggers. I feel like you don't see really interesting ones very often, but I really like the idea of it. Instead of making, like, a flicker deck where you try and have things enter the battlefield and then die, or, like, enter the battlefield and then exile and then enter the battlefield again... You instead use all those black spells that are like target creature gains when this dies, put it back into the battlefield. So you get like ETB triggers a second time, but you also get like, you can do that death trigger without worrying about it dying. I think it's really interesting. And then you put in like a sacrifice deck. I don't know. Something I want to tinker with in real magic, but I really just have not had the time. So I haven't. Anyway, I like the spell. Six mana, five, five. Makes another five, five. Great. Ink Eyes Lava Claw. Hmm. Ink Eyes Lava Claw is a 4-mana, 2-2, two, two, blue creature spirit. It is flying, and when Ink Eyes Lava Claw enters the battlefield, it explores. Which means, reveal the top card of your library. Put that card into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on this creature. Then, put the card back, or put it into your graveyard. That is the correct text for exploring. Cool. Uh, do I like this? It's a 4-mana 2-2 two, two flyer. Not great. If the explorer doesn't hit a land, 
then it's a 3-3 flyer. It's okay. If it does hit a land, you have a land. Um, huh. I think that this would be better if you didn't have to reveal it. Like, if it was like, look at the top card of the library, put that card into your hand, or like, reveal it and put it into your hand. Or if it's a land, you may reveal it and then put it into your hand. Otherwise, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature and then put it back. Because if you had that choice, this card could be really interesting because you're, you're scrying for one, or surveilling. You're surveying for one. Uh, surveilling? Surveilling. And you get a 3-3 flyer, which I think would be kind of okay. I'm going to take my free reroll on this. I don't think I need to, and I might be setting myself up for disaster on this. The history of Kessig isn't known to most, but a brief synopsis is known to many. Sink Below Octopus. Sink Below Octopus is a 4-mana, 2-3, blue octopus. Sink Below Octopus can't block. Wow. Wow, that's so bad. Do I keep this? I just said I only get one reroll. Holy crap, that's horrible. Yeah, I should have kept the other card. Dang. When not being devoured by Sink Below Octopus, it is one of the most powerful spells ever devised. That doesn't even mean anything. You may be a 4-mana 2-3 that can't even block, but you're an octopus, and that makes you special and good and stuff. I flubbed that line read. Oh, well. Isolate is a 3-mana blue sorcery. Prevent all combat damage that will be dealt by target creature this turn. Cool. It's a one-sided thing. One creature doesn't deal any damage. If they'll take damage if you block them, though. Pew, 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 pew. Cool. It's fine. It's not great. It's fine. It'd be better if it was an instant. A deadly game of hide-and-seek, murder, and greed. You know what? We're on a re-rolling cards kick. Let's do one again. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? This is my one for your re-roll. This is why I should save these for when they're actually really bad. Shadow Procession is a 3-mana blue sorcery. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Draw a card. Woo! That's awesome. Up to two creatures from your graveyard to your hand and you draw a card? That's a 3-mana draw 3 if you have stuff in the bin. Beautiful. I love it. And you might be like, that's just really strong. And it's like, yeah, but it only works if you have stuff in the bin, which means you have to, like, put the work in to get that to be the case. And I, don't, I like it. I think it's cool. Wild Walker Scob is a 5-mana green 3-3 three, three human rogue with vigilance. And creatures you control have vigilance. Sweet! I mean, that other card we saw that was, like, 3-mana, 2-2, two, two, first strike, creatures you control, first strike. Uh, that was... That was really cheap. This one's 5 mana. I think this card's a lot more reasonably costed. And I like it. I think this card's good. I do like that we're seeing the same templating, though. Like, Vigilance. Creatures you control of Vigilance. First Strike. Creatures you control of Hit. First Strike. That's just fun. I just like that there's, like, that parallel across cards. Cool. The Wardens heed their Leonin call to hunt the perpetrators. Per perpetrators. First, I thought that was, as I started reading that, I thought it was going to be, like, like not a real word, like, Teractodons or something, and uh, no, it's just perpetrators. Skullbash is a one-mana blue enchantment aura enchant creature. Enchanted creature has a skull bashed in and loses all abilities that it had. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> the wording, first of all, that's not what it says. It says it gets minus two, minus two, and loses all abilities that it had. But I do want to say, like, that's a weird wording. This I think this card functions fine. I like it. One mana, minus two, minus two, doesn't have abilities anymore. That's awesome. That's a really good, like, shutdown effect. I can still attack and still block, but it can't use its abilities. It doesn't have activated, doesn't have triggered abilities. Sweet. The fact that, like, it's worded as and loses all abilities that it had is so weird. Like, it's just extra words that you wouldn't normally use, but I don't think it's actually fundamentally wrong or anything. One rule to go, another to follow. 
Blood Hunter Goblin is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one red goblin pirate. Hey, it's a pirate. Whenever go Blood Hunter Goblin attacks, it gets plus 1, plus 0 oh, until end of turn. I, you know, I gotta be honest, I'm like weirdly disappointed with this, the, the result so far. Just because like, in my tests, I kept making pirates that were like, tutor a pirate. Do something if you control another pirate. Like, all these, like, internal pirate synergy cards. And I was like, this is going to be such a cool set. I'm so excited. And just, no. No, not really. There's still time. There's plenty of time. A single goblin who traveled from goblin territory to discover a more colorful life. That makes sense. Infest is a three-mana black sorcery choose one destroy target artifact or destroy target creature i like it it's a sorcery speed murder except it has the upside that you can hit an artifact instead having an extra mode is great being able to hit artifacts sometimes is useful i'm into it love this card grumbling at the waste of its parts infest spat them out as it reformed the devourer's roar the devourer's roar Ooh. Kumano's Tome Shredder is a 4-mana, blue and black, 3-3, three, three, creature, spirit, pirate. Whenever Kumano's Tome Shredder attacks, create a treasure token. That's it. Huh. It's good. I think it's good. Yeah. I think it could be better. But, like, I think it's good. I guess I was just kind of hoping for more. But yeah, no, that's good. I wish I had a rudder. I wish I had a harpoon. I wish I had a sail, a sword, or something to defend myself with. Aku, Jama Pirate. But who's Kumano? Penitent Tybalt is a... <laughs> Sorry, that got me. That's... <laughs> Only the Penitent Tybalt may pass. Penitent Tybalt is a 4-mana blue 3-3 three, three creature Badalkin pirate with raid. Whenever Penitent Tybalt or another non-legendary pirate you control dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under your, under its owner's control. Hey, okay, let's talk about Penitent Tybalt. But more specifically, let's talk about raid. This is one of the mechanics I saw time and time again when I was testing cards before this set, which was, hey, we're going to use the ability word raid. Do you, do you know what the ability word raid does? No, 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 it doesn't matter. It's just, it's just, it's just, you just use it. It's just, it predates a cool ability, right? It's like, I, I think there's more to it than that. No, 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 no. I got this. I got this. I got this. So yeah, um. I've seen a lot of pirates with raid, and they've all been completely different. Like, no consistency. I believe raid is something like, when this enters the battlefield, if you attack to this turn, do something. Or if you, like, dealt damage or something. It's it's one of those mechanics. Um, we are going to 100% just accept that, in this case, raid means whatever Penitent, Tybalt, or another non-legendary pirate you control dies, return it to the battlefield, tapped under its owner's control. Which is probably too strong. Like, that is so good, right? It only hits non-legendary pirates, which is cool. And it doesn't hit things that aren't pirates. Like, so it's not your entire board always coming back if you have things that aren't pirates, but this is going to be really hard to get rid of once you have it. Like, this is going to stick on the board and just, what do you do? You, you bounce it, or you exile it, or you, like, maybe hit it with that one spell that makes cards remove, lose all their abilities. But, like, yeah, it's going to be oppressive. Cool. Did I read the flavor text? There are many places for piracy to hide as there are victims. Oh, as many places for it to hide as there are victims. That makes sense. Battle Royale is a two-mana black enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each attacking creature. Ooh. Ooh, that's spicy. I like that. This is cool. You could even use this on a blocker because if your opponent attacks with, like, three creatures, then this gets plus three, plus three. Right? It doesn't care. 
It doesn't care who's attacking. That's fun. I like that. And it's called Battle Royale. Like, you get stronger the more people there are. Yeah, this is good. I like this. This is a cool card. I was one of them once. You know the story. Ven Aqueous Stranger. I don't know the story, Ven. You gotta tell me the story. Ven! Ah, Ven. I can't believe. You know the story. I don't need to bother telling you. I, will, I don't need to bother mentioning it. I am gonna mention it. I'm just not gonna tell you. But I'm gonna mention it. Toraloth is a 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, green rhino beast with trample. As long as Toraloth is equipped, it gets plus 3 plus 3 and has trample. Hey! That's pretty good. This card's rad. 2 mana, 2-2 two, two with trample is already probably fine. In fact, the more I think about it, the more I kind of wished original grizzly bears were 2 mana, 2-2s two, with trample. Yeah. Anyway, 2 mana, 2-2 two, two with trample, and as long as Tarleth is equipped, it gets plus 2 plus 3. Cool. If you can equip this, it not only does it get the equipment, it's getting additional plus 3 plus 3, and it's got trample. So, like, it's going to be able to use the fact that it's a 5-5 five, five body at that point. That's awesome. That's so rad. A signet for a family of tavern raiders. Sea Dweller is a 2 mana black 1 2 shapeshifter. Whenever Sea Dweller becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, that player loses 1 life. Ooh! So if you shoot your own shapeshifter, you get hurt, but if your opponent tries to shoot your shapeshifter, they get hurt. That's fine. That, that could be. That's fine. I think that could be stronger, but that's okay. The Thrill of the Hunt. The rage of the hunt. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it. I think it's I think it's cute. Stalwart no Saltwater Cavalry is a oh, stalwart. Saltwater Cavalry is a two mana one one red human pirate. Saltwater cavalry can't block. For generic and red, saltwater cavalry gets plus one plus O until end of turn. Huh, okay, interesting. So it is um expensive fire breathing on a one one body that can't even block. And it's a 2-2. Two, two, or a 2 cost, I mean. Eh, I don't like it. I think it's weak. It's it's probably okay, but it's not, like, exciting. I want to try again. The strength of the law was a fine target for his anger. And my one reroll. We have to take this one. Sand Swamp Smasher is a 2-mana two 2-1 two red goblin with haste. Sand Swamp Smasher attacks each combat if able. Cool. For 2 mana, Sand Swamp Smasher gains first strike until end of turn. Oh, I like this card. 2 mana, 2-1, two, with haste. I don't know what the going rate for that would be, but whatever. I think that's a reasonable price. And you can spend some mana to give it first strike. Rad. It does have to attack every combat, which is a downside, but, you know, they're your little hasty friend. They, you want to be attacking with them. You know, you only play them on a turn that you actually plan on attacking with them, because they have haste. And then, on future turns, you have the mana to give them first strike if you need to, when they're forced to attack. That's rad. Thick underbrush makes it hard to tell the truth from the lies in goblin history. Zepic, the first hand goblin slang. Oh, Zepic, the first hand goblin slang. Weird. Sand Swamp Smasher. I kind of wish this was a goblin pirate, but with a name like that, it doesn't seem exceptionally piratey, so I guess that's reasonable. Volcanic Goon is a 4-mana, black and red, 2-2 two, two goblin. It is flying. Volcanic Goon gets plus 1 plus 1 as long as you control a red permanent. So it is a red permanent, so this is a 4-mana, 3-3 three, three with flying. That's it. I'm not saying that's bad, but I do think we can do better. Once on Stromkirk Overkill, Grixis Sorcery Czar Geralt retorted to the inevitable, It's too rocky for goblins! Deluge Raider ooh, is a 4 mana, 2-2, two, two, black and red creature Kraken. When Deluge Raider enters the battlefield, create a 3-3 blue Kraken creature token with menace, meaning it can't be blocked except by two or more creatures, and also you can spend three mana, one of which has to be black, to give Deluge Raiders 
plus two plus two until end of turn. What a cute little card. I like this. Four mana for five five worth of stats between a two two and a three three. The three three has menace and you can additionally spend three mana to buff this at three for two stats. Very cool. The Yorlian Confederation had a reputation for allowing nothing to stand in their way. Yeah. Yeah. Badge of the Seas is a 2-mana two 2-1 two black pirate warrior with raid. When Badge of the Seas enters the battlefield, if you attack this turn, which again, I think is I think that actually is what raid means, so cool. If you attack this turn, create a 1-1 one, one black and green pirate creature token with menace. I like this. So it's a 2-mana two 2-1, two which isn't great, but if you need a 2-mana two 2-1, two you're like, fine, whatever. That's not that much worse than a grizzly bear if I just need a body. But, if you attacked and you play this in your second main phase, you get a 2-1 and a 1-1. One, one. The 1-1 one, one has menace. That's 3-2 of stats with for 2 cost, and you got a menace out of it. I'm into it. I think that's fun. He sailed in good company, even if he didn't always get along with his officers. Yeah, Badge of the Seas, some pirate warrior. Once again, actually, that was a pirate warrior again, wasn't it? Once again, we don't really know who they are. When you're a pirate, doesn't matter who you are. Carry on. Four mana, white instant. Untap all creatures you control. They gain flying until end of turn. Oh, wow. That's a win con. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. The Phalanx rushes, crash, crushes foes with unclenched power. The Phalanx rushes, crash, crushing foes with unchecked power. That makes more sense. Cool. No, that, that's great. That's just really good. I, yeah. Steady Sea Dragon is a four mana black one, one goblin pirate. It's a creature with vigilance and tap. Steady Sea Dragon gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Activate only once each turn. This sucks. He is very efficient. But that's a very dull profession. <laughs> yeah, sure he's efficient, but it's super boring to be efficient. In fact, that, I mean, mana-wise, they were not efficient. They were very bad. Bizarre Aquatanist. Aquatanist. That sounds almost like a real word, and I like it. Like you're acquiring something and obtaining something, you're aquitaining it. Aquitanist. Um, Bizarre Aquitanist is a 4 mana, 2 3 black goblin with menace. At the beginning of each end step, if you gained 5 or more life this turn, transform Bizarre Aquitanist. Ooh, I have to decide. Are we allowing transform cards? Technically, this can't transform, does not have a back. So. Either we would need to create a back, which I'm not going to do because I can't possibly tell Urza's AI to make the backside of Bizarre Aquatanist a 4-mana 2-3 Black Goblin Menace that requires you to gain 5 life in your turn to transform it. Like, it won't know how to make that, right? Like, I could just say, make me a card, and it'll be like, here's a random card, but there's no reason why that card should be the backside of this card. Uh... Alternatively, it just can't transform, and it's a 4-mana 2-3 with Menace, which is just not interesting. Um, I think I'm going to call this a free reroll. This is not my one reroll. This is just the fact that this card doesn't function. That can't transform. Never in the dawning of our city did it cross my mind to trade it. It was the traders that they too eager to bargain and... What? It was the traders that they too eager to bargain and betray. I didn't, I don't, I don't follow that sentence. Gossip monger, plunderer of the Mornwall markets. Mornwall markets, ooh. Like a city called Mornwall. And these are the markets. Dromoka's Deception, we have Dromoka already. I think we kept the Dromoka card, right? And they were black and red? Yeah, okay. Dromoka's Deception is a four mana, three, two, black zombie pirate. Ooh. They are flying, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you may have target opponent exile a creature they control. Holy crap, this card is awesome. What? 
Whoa! Now, it's not target creature, so I think this is kind of like your opponent sacrifices a creature, right? Like, you target the opponent, the opponent exiles one of their creatures. You don't get to decide which creature they are exiling, so... Rad! Serving under Seneer of the Sea's heel is an abomination of scum and treachery. You'll be treated as he is, so much as he is a threat to us all. So much as he is a threat to us all. Hmm. Grixis Pilgrim. I like this card. This card's probably too strong, and I love it. <laughs> and it's a zombie pirate, and it talks about Dromoka. This is amazing. Punctilious Pirates is a two mana, one one black orc pirate. Woo! Love an orc pirate. Three mana, Punctilious Pirates gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Boo! This card's boring. What? Oh, come on. Punctilious Pirates, the two mana, one one orc pirate? You can do better. You can do better! Dismelorat, he must have been poking about under the deck. Scavi, Captain of the Narb. After she saved a bottle of oil from a grate. What? I'm not worrying about it. This one's not... We're, we're re-rolling this one. That's my one free re-roll, though. I don't get to do stuff based on opinion from here on. Siege Gang Boss is a 2-mana, 1-2, black creature zombie. For black, Siege Gang Boss gains haste until end of turn. Reminder text. Black can be paid with one mana from a library. Count both debts and assets. <sighs> you know, this is the thing. Earlier I was talking about how I want to try and make an unset with Urza's AI, and sometimes it does give you stuff like this. Now, first of all, it's not consistent enough that I can make an entire set that's weird and broken like this. And second of all... This doesn't even work in an unset. It doesn't mean anything. Unsets are all about using common language to mean something that players can understand even though the rules of the game do not. This means nothing at all. Alright. Loot. A shiny new cask or a torch to guide you back to life, whichever you desire. Sir Yordle, Krognar Camp Wharf Rat. Sandbar Buccaneer is a 2-mana, 1-2, black human pirate with menace. This creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Whenever Sandbar Buccaneer attacks, you may draw a card. Woo! There we go! There's our cheap pirate that's actually kind of super busted, and holy crap, this card's really strong. Not all seamen sail for glory. Yeah, fair enough. Warden Elias. Ooh. Warden Elias is a four mana, white and black, 3-3 three, three, legendary creature, human pirate. They are flying. Whenever Warden Elias enters the battlefield, return a pirate you control to its owner's hand. That sucks. Oh, come on. You seemed so cool at first. And what is it? It's a four mana, 3-3 three, three with flying... With a downside. I mean, yeah, sure, if your pirates have ETBs and you want to, like, bounce them, sure, maybe that's an upside. But it's a pretty minor upside, and it's not a May ability. I'm reroll. I Ah, Warden Elias is such a good name. When the sky falls, I'll be the first to step forward. Sorry, Elias. We can do better. We can do better. Shattered Sunar. Nope. Brood of Nosdroev. Why does it keep doing that today? Weird. Brood of Nosdroev. Not a super legendary name. It sounds more like, you know, one of any number of the like members of a brood or something. But maybe it's like, no, this is the entire brood of Nosdroev. There is only one the entire brood of Nosdroev. That makes sense. Is a four mana, white and black, two, three, legendary creature spirit. Ooh, it's a spirit brood? What does that mean? Other pirates you control get plus one, plus one. Cool, we got ourselves a lord. Awesome. Whenever one or more pirates you control attack, brood of Nosdrov deals one damage to any target. Okay. 
Cool. So you want to have pirates, you want them to be attacking, you only get to ping a single time no matter how many pirates you have, which is kind of annoying, but also makes this card a lot fairer. Um, I think this card you could probably have flying. This would be a really cool, like, flying spirit, but I don't know. I wonder what the spirits are like in the setting, right? Spirits are very inconsistent across magic. Some of them are like ghosts that fly around, and others are like weird incarnations of concepts and things. Um, we'd have to know what Nazdroev is. His living boils blistered their lips, then tasted the salt. Yeah, I don't know what that means, sorry. Cool, we got our first legendary, I think. No, we got a planeswalker, but legendary creature. Follow the Voyage of Discovery is a one-mana green sorcery. Search your library for up to two creature cards with different names, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. Oh my. Um, It's a tutor that only finds creatures. But it finds two of them. And is only one mana. And two creatures is often enough to do an infinite combo. So... Or like an OTK. I guess that necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean to be infinite. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, now, will that be for this set? No idea. But it's worth pointing out. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Hmm. Every expedition is an opportunity for a legendary discoverer to lay claim to a new to new lands, a source of raw materials, and a cache of knowledge. You know what? Against my better judgment, I'm going to allow it. I'm going to allow it. It functions, and I don't want to get an even worse card than this in my reroll. So, we're keeping it. Lupus Hand of Doom is a 6 mana red 4-3 legendary creature goblin pirate. Ooh. For red and sacrifice Lupus Hand of Doom, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0, oh, and gain haste until end of turn. Ha! Huh, do I like this? A 6 mana 4-3 is bad. But on a future turn, or the same turn if you really wanted to, but on the future turn, you can sack this, give plus one, plus O to your entire board, and give your board haste. So, you play this on turn six, then turn seven, you play, a, like, a, another six mana thing, sacrifice this, giving that six mana, that, that thing's haste, um, and then you attack? I guess the question is, can we do better? I don't know. The power of greed and ambition blurred his vision. The mind rewrote reality to match his twisted view. Sometimes, with more expensive cards, I like to ask myself not, is this card good enough to play? But is this card good enough to cheat out? If I have a way of bringing this out of my graveyard, would I want to? I don't know. It's usually like 5 mana, I'm getting a 4-3, and I had to go through the hoops of actually cheating it out. Maybe? Maybe. I'm going to give it another shot. I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant here because Goblin Pirate is a very fun type line. Uh, it does have a use case, even though it takes a couple turns to get online. Or, I mean, you could play it for 7 mana, but that's a pretty weak 7 mana play, I think. But, eh. I don't know. I'm into it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-roll it. I'm hesitant, but I will do it. Junius Brutus Gribbly, that's quite the name, is a 6 mana, 6-6, six, six, legendary creature goblin pirate with pirate versions of Juniper Rogue, Menace, Skulker, Skyship Stalker, Thieves Guild Outfitter, Thieves Guild Helmsman, Thieves Guild Lowlife, Thieves Guild Shug Coat, Thieves Guild Standard, Thieves Guild Watchman, and... Thieves Guild Yeoman. I thought it was going to be like, pirate versions of these cards have an effect or something, which wouldn't mean anything anyway, but I thought it was still going somewhere. That, 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 that just didn't do anything. The skulking corners of Ixalan have always attracted its unsavory denizens. I would be kind of interested in a card that was like, this specific card... Okay, imagine a card that's like, I don't know, 
uh, Junius's lackey. And Junius's lackey says, Junius, uh, you know, cards you control named Junius Brutus Gribbly gain, uh, have flying as long as they are pirates or something, right? And then Junius Brutus Gribbly isn't a pirate naturally and you have to have some way of making it a pirate or something. Like, that'd be kind of fun. I'd be into something like that. Anyway, I'm re-rolling this. This is not that. I mean, I already used my free re, my 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 like one reroll. This was a functionless reroll. It didn't. It wasn't technically functionless. It's just like who knows what that means. Otep Foul Blooded is a six mana four five legendary creature orc pirate. Well, at least I'm getting pirates for all my legendaries. I like that. Island Walk. The creature can't be blocked as long as defending player controls an island. Okay. At the beginning of each combat, if you control a non land permanent such as Otep, okay. Otep, Foul-Blooded, deals one damage to that permanent controller. Uh. Uh. Well, that sucks. So... It's a 6-mana 4-5 with Island Walk and ping yourself every turn. Um, I wish I kept with the Goblin Pirate. I mean, it functions. According to my rules, it functions, and I've already used my reroll. Sorry, this is what we get. We get Otep, the Foul-Blooded. It feels a bit unseemly for him to drink a few barrels of rum and be content with his treasure. It's all part of the job. Commander Elias. Not to be confused with Elias, this is Elisa, sorry. Commander Elisa Corneva is a 3 mana 1 1 white creature spirit. Whenever you gain life, put a 1 1 counter on Commander Elisa Corneva. So couple things. This is not legendary. So it, it sounded legendary. Cor commander Alisa Corneva. Sounds legendary. But I guess it's just like a, car a, ca a commander? Maybe it's like a commander within like... It's like some sort of... Like maybe a rank. Like Commander Alisa Corneva is a rank. Right? Like Commander General or something. Hmm. Uh, three mana, one, one. Not amazing. Is a spirit. Cool. Whenever you gain life, put a counter. So if you have life gain, this could be big. And it doesn't start... It's not that expensive at first, so maybe it's okay. It'd be really nice if it had flying, though. Once again, we're seeing spirits without flying. Hmm. When a pirate lost their ship, they traded their parrot for an extra keg. Yeah, that sounds right. Razor Reef is a colorless land, like most lands. A Razor Reef enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer other lands. Tap add red. Oh, it's just... It's just a worse mountain. Huh. Do I want to give myself a rule for re-rolling these that it can't be worse than basics? I'm going to go with that. I'm going to say they can't be worse than basics. Like the Earth, Kiora likes to take her time. She waits patiently for others to arrive and prepare for the day. Yeah. New rule. Can't be worse than a basic. Howling Peaks is a land. Howling Peaks enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer other lands. Tap, add red or white. Okay. Yeah. This is just a real card. Once again, we're seeing our dual lands that have white in them. Howling Peak is the legendary peak of Mount Gaia. It doesn't usually feel this loud. Cool. I think they call them like, these. I don't, I don't know the, the like community names for different types of lands but this is a real effect right where if you play it on turn one or two then it comes into play untapped and that's great but if you play it later then it's tapped yeah i think that's perfectly reasonable kumena's expertise is a two mana blue instant it has some cutoff text let's see if i can read it no Return up to two. T 
target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Huh. Okay. Great. Then it has flying, which doesn't make sense because it's not a permanent. At the beginning of each upkeep, you may pay two. If you do, return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. I've been thinking a lot about, like, spells that have effects as if they were permanents. Or, like, not spells, but, like, um, instant sorceries. Non-permanent spells. And, um, and sometimes I think you can actually make it work. Because there's precedent for, like, old cards before templating was, you know, unified. Where you would still see cards that have, like, an activated ability. And what it meant was, like, if you look at the Oracle text, it means, like, as an additional cost to cast this spell, you may pay that activated ability, right? Um, so, even though that's not co technically correct, there's precedent for it. You just know what it's supposed to mean. In this case, I don't think it's possible, right? Like, I don't think there's anything unless it was the beginning of like the next end step or something right but i don't i don't think so so i'm calling this a function reroll famine's right hand could lift a horse but hunger only an illusion urabrask pirate what interesting Invigorate is a two-mana blue instant. Prevent the next one damage that will be dealt to any target this turn. If that damage would be prevented this way, Invigorate deals that much damage to that permanent or player instead. Um, great. So, this does literally nothing. I'm not counting this as my my, my one reroll. This, this doesn't do anything. I can't even think of a weird, cheesy situation in which this is useful. To prevent a damage and then instead deal the damage. Like, all this means is that instead... Like, the only thing this could does is, like, if you had something with Death Touch, and it was dealing damage to something, doing one point of damage, you could say, Haha, you don't deal that one damage. The thing is still gonna take damage, but I'm doing the damage, so you don't get the Death Touch. Like, that's the only thing I can think of. That's so weak. Vessels. Catch them. Keep them. Ixalan Pirate Chant. <laughs> I'm not going to chant it, but that's really funny. Violent Crossing is a two-mana blue instant. Counter target creature spell. Cycling, generic, and blue. When you cycle Violent Crossing, counter target creature spell. Oh. So what you're trying to tell me is that this is a two-mana... Draw a card, counter target creature spell. That might be fine. Like, it's such a narrow thing it counters. Costing two mana and drawing you a card might be perfectly reasonable. I don't know. Like all runaway cats, he hated his own clan. Hmm. Again, I don't I don't use counter spells, so I really don't know what the going rate is for them. Armored Veteran is a 3-mana 2-2 two, two white human soldier. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 3 or more pirates, Armored Veteran gains indestructible until all turn. Huh. It's interesting that it's not um, just if you have 3 or more pirates, this is indestructible. It's only on your turn, right? At the beginning of your upkeep, it checks to see if you have the pirates. If you do, it is indestructible for that turn only. So it's not, it doesn't have a disruptible on other players' turns. So you can't use it as an infinite blocker. Cool. Okay. Yeah. A wise leader considers the limits of his power, while a fool gives himself a bigger head. Foul Tongue Bandit is a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two white human pirate. As long as you can have... As long as you have an island in your graveyard. Interesting. Foul Tongue Bandit gets plus two plus two and has flying. I like this card. What the heck? This card is cool. This is hard to pull off though. Like, you don't often put your lands in your graveyard except for like fetch lands, right? Like, sacrifice this land, go search your library for a land. Sure. But you don't really... Unless you're discarding cards or milling yourself, it's not going to come up. Which will come up in blue sometimes, but doesn't really come up in white that much from my memory. So, this is cool. I like this card. It's like a reasonably difficult thing to pull off, 
which makes it seem reasonable that it's so strong. Like, legitimately, a 2-mana 4-4 four, four with flying is really strong. That is hard to deal with that early in the game, but you probably don't have it that early in the game. You know? Every crime needs an accomplice. I like that one. That one's really cool. It just sounds like a fun thing to try and make a deck about. You know, like decks that are all about that one wizard that wants to turn themselves into a fly. I can't remember what they're called right now. Delver of Secrets, I think. Flame Juggler is a 1 mana 01 Red Goblin. For 1 mana, Flame Juggler gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. Huh, do I like this? This is like kind of a fun take on it, right? It is the smallest you can have a creature be. It costs 1, it is a 0 1, and it has Fire Breathing. Is Fire Breathing good? Well, I think it's often pretty good when you're like when it's attached to like a 4-4 flyer or something so you don't have to pay that much mana for it to be relevant and it's already got flying this ah i don't know i don't know but i'm kind of interested in it if this is a pirate i would snap keep this just because you got to have some pirates if we're going to have... If I want there to be cards that have pirate synergies, I better have some pirates that don't have pirate synergies just to be the, there to synergize with those pirates. But this is just a goblin. I have been enjoying how many goblins are on this set, though. This is fun. In times of scarcity, desperate measures are often taken. You know what? I like it. I, I can see a deck that would want this card. They'd be like, no, this is exactly what I want in my deck. I just want some small little thing that's, like, you know, inconspicuous. Yeah. Someone's going to want that card in their deck, so I'm going to keep it. Razor Sails is a 3-mana, three 3-2, three black human pirate. When Razor Sails enters the battlefield, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. It's a 3-mana, three 3-2 three that draws you a card in the form of an artifact from your graveyard. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I think it could stand to be a 3-3, three three, but... That's okay. Not that big a deal that's only 3-2. Do not mistake this for bravery. It is just cowardice. A hiding place from the gods. The right choice is the easy one. Nykara. Interesting. Interesting. Curse Catcher. I know Curse Catcher. Curse Catcher's a merfolk, isn't it? Yeah. Curse Catcher is a... Two mana, blue sorcery. Scry one. If you would draw a card, you may mill two cards instead. If you do, return Curse Catcher to its owner's hand. Hmm. Interesting. So once again, we're discussing the idea that this card is written as if it was a, you know, permanent. Right? This is a static effect. If you would draw a card, you may mill two cards instead. If you do, return this to its owner's hand. Which is interesting. The implication is that you if this is a permanent on the battlefield. You could choose to not draw, to mill this down, and you have to pick up your curse catcher. But hey, you can play it again to scry one, right? Like, that's kind of an interesting idea. But there's another interpretation that I think is worth exploring, which is some cards will say stuff like, you know... You control target permanent. And that's just true. They don't have an end stop. This doesn't say, if you would, like, for the rest of the turn, if you would draw a card, you may mill two cards. Maybe this is just true. Like, for the rest of the game, if you would draw a card, you may mill two. Instead, if you do, return this to its owner's hand. Where does it return from? Well, actually, it returns from the graveyard in that case, because it's a sorcerer. You've cast it. Like, maybe? Maybe? Like, there's, there's certainly a possibility of interpreting this as, I cast this once, and now I have this effect for the entire rest of the game. And honestly, I don't know if I'd mind that. Like, you're, it's, you're skipping your draw to mill two cards. Like, that's not... That's not so brutal. I mean, it's not so, like infinitely powerful that i think i mind that being a floating effect for the entire thing it's weird right we're not used to seeing effects that stick around forever like that but it's not without precedent 
They just usually say for the rest of the game. I kind of want to keep this. Like, it's just a really cool idea of having a card that says, Scry 1, and then, from now on, if you would draw a card, you may mail two cards instead. If you ever choose to do this, this comes back from your graveyard to your hand. Now, it doesn't say from the graveyard, but whatever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretend that that's what it does. And that means you can then cast it again to scry again, if you want to spend two to scry. Which maybe you do, because you're milling half your deck away, hoping to find the right card, right? You want to know what the top card of your deck is, otherwise you can't really debate, do I want to scry or do I want to mill? Pirates fight for the right to eat whatever the victim won't eat themselves. Yeah, that's about right. I'm gonna keep it. It's weird and quirky and probably doesn't work, but, I mean, hey... That's what this is all about, right? Finding things that don't currently exist because they don't really work and seeing if we can make them work. That's what AI lets us do. Hidden Stash is a 3-mana 2-2 two, two Black Orc Pirate. It has Flash and other pirates you control get plus 1 plus 1. This card's great! We love it! 3-mana 2-2. Two, two. Doesn't buff itself. Awesome. Good job, AI. You usually mess that one up. And uh, you can flash it in. That's so good. Hidden stashes in Port Nix's docks were, were as plentiful as the stowaways. Uh, that's a good point. This is an orc pirate named Hidden Stash. What the heck does that mean? I don't know when I'm not going to think about it. Cutthroat Gobbos is a 4-mana 2-2 two, two red goblin pirate. Cutthroat Gobbos can't block. This card is absolutely garbage. Uh, also, generally speaking, I know that I'm the weirdo for thinking this, but I, I kind of think of Gabo as like a slur. Like, I know it's not a real, like, race of creatures, but, like, it feels bad, and I don't... If, if goblins were real, it would be a slur. I don't think that makes it okay to use in a fantasy setting, so let's... I want to... This is, this is my stand. I stand here, I declare this. People, I'm right. Goblins and goblin organizations can often outlast human forces by using each other for support. This is a free reroll. Uh, no, no, not free reroll. This is the, my reroll, technically, because that card did function. Dromarks in Flight. Okay, that's not Dromoka, but that definitely has the same root, right? Dromarks in Flight is a 4-mana, 3-3, three, three, red creature ogre pirate. Ogre Pirate, I'm into it. Whenever Dromark's in flight or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, create a treasure token. Well, first of all, it doesn't have flying, and that's just disappointing. Second of all, if this said pirate, this card would be pretty okay. A 4-mana 3-3 that gives you a treasure every time you play a pirate would be rad. But it says ally. I'm... There's, I, I'm not going to play an ally. That's not going to happen. You know that and I know that. What are you doing? Okay. Yeah, so... It functions, though, and it's in the game. His broad, stony gaze never leaves a single brow, betraying nothing of his keen, treacherous mind. Onyx Arachnus is a 4-mana green 3-4 spider. It has reach, and Onyx Arachnus can't be blocked by creatures with flying. Ooh! Ooh, that's fun! Haha, -ha, I can block your flyers, but your flyers can't block me! <laughs> I'm into it, that's really fun. When spiders become pests, people will develop them for their silk. Wild Nakatl Raiders is a Nakatl, Nakatl, I don't know if that's right, is a 3-mana white 2-2 two -two human pirate with Raid. When Wild Nakatl Raiders enters the battlefield, if you attack this turn, creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Ah. So we're seeing Raid again, and it's correct again. It is when something you control attack this turn. Cool. Or if something you control attack this turn, as opposed to being some weird other effect. That's fun. I'm okay with that. Now it does say 
creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn, which is generally a pretty good e enter the battlefield effect, except for you won't get it unless your creatures are already attacking. So it's kind of useless. This card doesn't not function, it's just not interesting. I'm going to re-roll it. They stole far more than the horses. Nissa's Pilgrim is a 3-mana, 1-2 white human pirate. Whenever you gain life, you may untap target creature you control. That's pretty useful. Cool. She risked everything to survive, but she was a prisoner of war. Huh. Isle of Life is a basic land island? Oh. I didn't know basic lands were included in my JSON. Oops, that's a mistake. Um, well, yeah, what do you think a basic land island is? Um, or is AI? Tap add green. Okay, cool. Since it's an island, it also gets to add blue. Uh, it, having the super type basic is weird, but let's just ignore that for now. This is kind of cute. Um, for green and tap, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Uh, great. Uh, this card, I'm not gonna, like, re-roll it. I'm just not gonna use it. This card wasn't meant to be made. This was an accident. <laughs> cool. Alright, great. Let's move on. Thunderous Smite is a 6 mana red enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay red red. If you do, you gain 4 life, and Thunderous Smite deals 4 damage to any target. Wow! So it's 6 mana do nothing. But if you do, you can spend 2 mana every upkeep to gain four life and deal four damage and it can hit any target it can hit planeswalkers and creatures and your opponents in the face uh i think this comes down too late to be good but is very scary if it does ever hit the field so yeah great if thunder didn't always rattle the heavens some of ixalan's nastiest might not have escaped noticed. Huh. Okay. Hollow Horizons is a land. Hollow Horizons end of the battlefield tapped. Tap, add black or green. That's boring. We can do better. We can do better. This is my one allowed reroll. Marsh Flats. I think that's a real land, but I'll let it pass. Uh... Tap to add colorless. Now, we don't know. This might enter tapped. The top line is maybe cut off or maybe not. We don't really know. Uh, tap, add green or blue. Marsh Flats doesn't untap during your untap step. If you control a swamp and a non-basic forest or plains. Um... I'm not re-rolling this on the grounds of it being fundamentally broken or on me getting a free re-roll, but I am going to re-roll it because I... On the grounds of it can't be stronger than a normal basic. We said that. It can't be... Or did I say stronger? Did I say weaker? I think I said weaker. It can't be weaker than a normal basic. Never mind. It can be stronger than a normal basic. I'm re-rolling this one. I get to make the rules. Our best leaders will always follow us to our farthest port. Our greed is the desire. They cannot resist our offers. What our hands have to feed our stomachs will be fed to their hands. It's all that we share. Izoni, the wild smoke herd. Yeah, I don't have a great reason. I guess, like, it cuts cut off. We don't know. Maybe it enters tap. Stuff like that. Uh, once again, this is boring. I think we already have one that does red and white. No, I'm not keeping this. My life's one big game of hide and seek. And it's fun when you win. Harborook. Yeah, Harborook. Sorry. I said that as if there was more to say. Uh, I know that previously I was like, oh yeah, I had a card. It was good. And then I re-rolled and it was bad. And now I'm sad about it. 
I don't know. There's like a there's like a, a bubble that I'm just like, no, nothing in this design bubble am I keeping, and I'm re-rolling those. That's it. Glory Sanctuary is a land. It taps to add colorless. You can also tap it to untap target creature. It gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Beautiful. Clean, simple, very nice. I like it. At the Battle of Zod, Zalfarine proved her boldness by defying Kefnet's order to lay down her weapons. Wow. Can't believe it's another land. It's it's another land. Whispering Hollow is a land, says tap, add, colorless. One in tap, add, red, 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 open curly bracket parentheses. Weird. Cabal Coffers is a real card. Uh, is a land. Says tap, add colorless. Tap, add blue or black. Cabal Coffers deals one damage to you. That is, that's just a shock land. That, yeah, a, a pain land? I don't know what they're called. These cards exist and they're good and people like them. And uh, I'm fine with it. As much as, hey, this card's a real card and you're not keeping it. This card's a real card and you are keeping it. We haven't seen one of these yet in the set. So whatever. Thieves sell better pickpockets than they do cut purses. Sell? Okay. Grudge Builder is a 3 mana red 3 2 goblin rogue. When Grudge Builder enters the battlefield, each player loses one life and you gain one life. Each player? Okay, so you don't actually change. Your opponent goes down, you go down and back up again, which would trigger life gain if you had a thing that cared about that. Um, I think this card's fine. 3 mana 3-2 isn't exciting, but pinging for 1 and maybe triggering life gain effects? Yeah. Sure. The denizens of the underworld need fear only the echoes of their voices, not their image. Hmm. Goblin rogue. Not a pirate. Oh, wow. I did not look... Okay. Zephyr rogue which is not a very legendary name, is a 12 mana green 11-11 legendary creature elemental. It has vigilance. For 5 mana and tap, create a 2-2 green bird creature token with flying. For 5, no, for 4 mana and tap, create a 3-3 green beast creature token with trample. I think this card's fine. Like, the weird thing is, I feel like this is the kind of thing, I don't know what card this is based off of, but it probably is something that is designed around being discounted, right? There's some kind of effect that's like, hey, 10 mana. If you do something weird, it'll cost four less, or five left, or six left, or seven less. And Sure, that's cool. I'm okay with that. That's a fun thing. Uh, but I look at 12 mana and I go, I'm going to cheat that out by, you know, resurrecting it from the graveyard. And if I can resurrect this for 5 mana to make an 11-11 with Vigilance, yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. And then I can, ongoing, if I want to, I can spend mana and tap this to just make birds. Or I can spend less mana and tap it to make beasts. The birds are flying, the beasts are trampled, the beasts are a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's cool. The only problem I have with this card is that it's called Zephyr Rogue, which is a cool name for not this card, but is not a cool name for a legendary elemental. I mean, I guess the elemental part's kind of cool because it's like a Zephyr that is a rogue. That's kind of fun, but it it's it's legendary. This is the Zephyr Rogue? What does that mean? Is this person's name Zephyr Rogue? Hi, I'm an elemental. I'm, the name's Zephyr Rogue. Okay, I want, you know, that's kind of, that kind of is cool, now that I say that out loud. So, I gave myself this rule of, like, you get one free reroll, but you, you only get one, because it would encourage me to not roll willy-nilly. Saying, if I reroll this, 
it might be an even worse card. And I don't know if I'm willing to do that. Like, this card is cool. I don't know if it's good, but it's cool. I'm interested in it. It looks fun. I kind of want to play this card. If I re-roll it, it might be worse. And I have to be I have to live with that. I have to live with what it turns into if I re-roll this. And that's something I'm gonna have to decide to do. Alright, Zephyr Rogue. Don't fail me. Orazka Ogre is a 12 mana, 10 10 legendary creature ogre with trample. Whenever you cast a spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Orazka Ogre. So it can't make tokens. And it doesn't have vigilance. But it has trample, which means you're actually likely to, like, I don't know, actually hit, like, do damage instead of just get chump blocked. So that's something. I do think the token generation was pretty cool from the last one, but, like, you don't want to be tapping this thing to make creatures. You want to be attacking with it. Yeah, but it had vigilance. You could attack with it, block with it, and make a token. Wow, you're right. Yeah, this sucks, but uh, it's going to get huge and just absolutely gross, and that's really funny to me. In Sosro 14, weird. Not even the Kraken swallowed it whole. So, who is Orozka Ogre? Again, is not a very legendary name, but since we're stuck with it, Zephyr Rogue. That that's a Zephyr Rogue. I know what a Zephyr Rogue is. It's not a person. It's not a. It's not a legendary person. Orozka Ogre. I don't really know what that means. I feel like I might have heard the word Orozka before, but I don't really recognize it. So I'm gonna just ignore it for the time being and say, okay. This is some legendary ogre that everyone just calls. Oh, yeah, that's a Razka ogre. Like, I don't know. The idea of saying there's not very many ogres, so, like, people just refer to the ogre as, like, oh, yeah, that's that ogre. Yeah, it's the ogre. And, like, even though that's very generic, there's still a legendary creature because there's only one of, oh, yeah, that ogre over there. I, I don't know. I can kind of buy it. It's a Razka ogre. Is a Razka their name, though? Or is it just, like, this is the Razka ogre? They're the ogre from Araska. I feel like it's one of those two, and I don't know which it is. Hmm. Oh, well. Let's keep going. Glowing Reef Keeper is a two-mana green, one-two creature elemental. It has Island Walk. For green, Glowing Reef Keeper gains flying until end of turn. Eh, sucks. One bite is all it takes. They all fall down. Bone Whip. Cultist Priest. Okay. This is my one. Triskelion Forester is a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two tree folk. A champion among champions. It's a grizzly bear. It's, this is literally a grizzly bear. The only thing that makes this not grizzly bears is that it is not a bear. And it's a tree folk. Otherwise, it is identical. It's even a green card. Um, yeah, you know what? Some sets need sets needs vanilla. This boom, you're in the set. Someone's gonna draft you. It's gonna be great. Faceless horror is a two mana colorless artifact. Phyrexian horror. It's a one one. Faceless horror enters the battlefield tapped. And for two mana, one of which has to be black, Faceless Horror gets plus one plus one until end of turn. For three mana, one of which has to be black, Faceless Horror gets minus one minus one until end of turn. So, no. If this was a two mana one one that you could spend two to give it plus one plus one, I'd still think that sucks. They laugh at the banal squabbles of life. The Abyss knows nothing but cruelty and greed. Ixalan note. Uh, and to be clear, my point is that this is even worse because it comes into play tapped. Burgeoning Inventor is a 2-mana, two 2-1, two colorless, artifact, creature, human, artificer. It has Improvise. Your artifacts can help cast this spell. Each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for 
one generic. Cool. Uh, yeah. You can tap artifacts to pay the two mana of this cost, so it's kind of a zero, two, one, kind of not. If you would draw a card, you may instead create a 1-1 one, one colorless thopter artifact token with flying. This card is rad. This card is so cool. What? Is this a real card? Does this effect ever been printed? If you would draw a card, you may replace that effect with a 1-1? One, one? What? That's so rad. Oh, wow. I love this. I will let nothing stand in my way. Oh, that's so fun. There should be more effects that are like, replace your draw with a different effect. That's that's just a bunch of... That's a fun mechanic. That's ah, so cool. I love that. Harpoon Attackers is a 2-mana red 1-1 one, one orc pirate. When Harpoon Attackers blocks a creature, it gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. Uh, does Harpoon Attackers or does the creature... It's bad either way. It's a two-mana, two-one. Every victim had a daydream about the freebooters. A chance to trade a year's earning for freedom. Skulk Attack is a two-mana, two-two red orc pirate. Orc pirates you control have shroud. Oh, cool! So this is not pirate synergy. It is specifically... Orc Pirate Synergy, which is very narrow, but we have seen other Orc Pirates. Cool. Uh, and at very least, it's a 2-mana 2-2 two -two with Shroud. 2-mana 2-2 two -two with Shroud? Good enough for me. Woo! Cool card. I like it. What we've learned is to fear only ourselves. The next step is to find someone else to fear. Throne Crown. Jacques Bane. That's really funny. Uh, it is worth pointing out, I should probably read Shroud. They can't be the targets of spells or abilities. Yes, you're correct, Urza's AI. That is what Shroud means. I'm proud of you. Moving on. Perilous Voyage is a 3-mana black sorcery. Exile all pirate cards from your graveyard. Draw 2 cards. Huh. Weird. It's just three mana draw two, which is fine. It's not super exciting, but it's fine. Like, people will play that. And there's kind of no drawback. The drawback is that it's a sorcery speed spell, so, yeah, a little bit annoying. And that you have to exile any pirates that are in your graveyard. But, you know, if you're casting something, you probably don't. Even if you do have a pirate in your graveyard, it probably didn't have recursion. Yeah, that's a cool card. Even on a pirate ship, the only room for food is the hold. Eureka, Pirate Lord. Eureka is a fun name. I like that. Charmed Griffin is a 4-mana, 3-2, colorless, artifact creature, Phyrexian Cat. I have a history with Phyrexian Cats. Let's move on. It has Flash and has Flying. A very simple card, but it's colorless, which is a benefit. It's a 3-2, which isn't that bad of a stat line. It has Flash, which is useful, and Flying, which is useful. This card's actually pretty cool. Also, the flavor text is each player draws a card, which has nothing to do with this card and does not have any rules relevance, uh, but it does say that. Order of the Ebon Hand is a 1-mana black 1-1 one, one, Creature, human, pirate. When Order of the Ebon Hand dies, draw a card. This is fine. It's a one mana, one, one. It's a pirate, so it counts as pirates for your pirate synergies. And when it dies, you draw a card. What more do you want? We must control the Ebon Hand, or it will burn the city of Azorius from within. Okrent. I love the way the AI just, like, takes any random proper noun and will use it for anything. I oh, yeah, Azorius. Um... That's a city. Yeah. Yeah, no, Azorius is a city now. And it's on Ixalan. Serpent Storm is a 3-mana black sorcery. Serpent Storm deals 4 damage to target creature. This card is... Boring. It's bad. It's bad. As they spilled into the ocean, the hordes formed themselves into new ships, spilling through the gateway like a tsunami. Ooh, interesting. I'm re-rolling that. Swift Leap is a 3-mana black sorcery. Exile target creature or planeswalker. Look at that! Ah! Oh, 
Beautiful, beautiful card. It has the downside of being a sorcery, but the upside that it can exile, not destroy, and it can hit planeswalkers. What a beautiful card this is. I love it. Swift Leap, the glint in Silvala's eyes had no warnings of the gleeful laugh that echoed in her wake. Hmm, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Belskin the Overseer is a three mana. Oh, interesting. Belskin the Overseer is a three mana green and blue legendary enchantment land. As I've mentioned previously, its color identity is green and blue. Its mana value is three, but it's a land and you get to play it for free as if it was a land. Normal land drop. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a card from your hand onto the battlefield. If you do, create a 3-3 three, three green centaur creature token. Holy crap, this card is busted. Now the upside, or the downside, I guess, is that it is an enchantment. You could destroy this with enchantment removal. You don't need land destruction to get rid of this thing. Uh, I don't know if we've seen any enchantment removal, but conceptually it could exist. Wow. I want to talk about the name Belzgin too. I, or Belkzin, actually. I read that and I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be like some creature, like the Overseer. But this is a land and an enchantment. It's not even like a creature land. Like, this is, hmm, I don't know about this. This is interesting. The real question is, if this was a zero mana enchantment with this effect, would I be like, oh yeah, that's fine. I don't think I would. I think I gotta re-roll this. And I am excited to see what happens. I don't know what the AI is gonna do with this. I am the overseer of the herd. I am the tiller of the fields. I am the judge of the sheaves. Jora, the wild mage. Huh. Not Bell, because then the, the overseer. Alright, that's our one re-roll. Gruul's Stronghold. That sounds like a land. Is a three mana, mana value, green and blue, legendary enchantment land layer. You tap it to add green and blue. Is this card just busted? Yes, it is just busted. It's not nearly as busted as that last card. It's just a land that is, you know, it's just a, it's just a land that produces two mana with no downside. And I'm going to allow it, because it's an enchantment, and it's legendary. And I think that that's kind of the point of these cards in the set. I think that's going to be fun. It is worth pointing out, that last card we saw, comparing it to a zero man enchantment is not strictly accurate, because it's worth remembering that it does use up your land drop, right? It It isn't just zero mana, it is your land drop for the turn, which, you know... That's worth something. That's not nothing. So, just worth being aware of. It is a weird thing to try to evaluate a card like this. Obviously, this is using up your land drop, but is better than the land you would be playing anyway. So, that's fine. Um, it's, it, I mean, what I'm saying is, so that's not really a downside of the card. Yeah. Um... I'm okay with this. It's too strong, and I'm still okay with it anyway. Because being an enchantment is a downside in this sense. Which I think is pretty cool. Gruul never wanted his kin to know he was their secret protector. Aww. So Gruul is like a faction or a, like a country or something in Magic. But in this setting, Gruul's a person. And this is their stronghold. I'm gonna actually call that... It for tonight. I was hoping to get through all the cards in one sitting, and uh, that quickly, quickly became apparent that that was not going to happen, and I really shouldn't push it. Um, but which is a shame because I do want to make more videos that are like kind of one and done. Here is a thing. Isn't that cool? Because well, honestly, historically, those videos have done better than the ones that are multi-part. I could simply not share the rest of this experience with you and just show you the deck which is the first time i did a set creation that's what i did i just made the set 
and I only showed this far into the set process. And that was it. And that was fine. People, people liked that somehow. Maybe that's okay. I'd rather show the whole thing. I don't want to just show part of it. It's fun to show it all with you. I want to. So I am going to split this into two parts, at least probably three. But I hope you've enjoyed this much. I've been Darcy Bits. This has been Urza's AI. The founding of Ixalan's pirates. I'm quite happy with what we've seen so far. Yeah, I felt like I was going to have a better outro than that. Have a good night, everyone. I'll catch you next time. Good night.